Hi guys. All right. So tonight Tracy and I are going to do a live on her channel using these Local King rubber stamps new set called Feather Pleasure. Um, we both ordered the stamps as well as the matching dies. As you can see here. Okay. They are uh, red rubber stamps. Here you can see one of the ones stamped out with three different color inks. But I am uh, making some backgrounds and I thought do I dare try the Heidi Swap toner ink again? So I'm going to take some cues from when Tim Holtz did it, understanding that I'm probably going to have some spotty, distressed looking results going into this. So I thought I'd record this so that when you guys ask me how I did it, you have the answer. So I have the larger um, Peacock's feather stamp and then this smaller stamp mounted to a block okay I have the Heidi Swap toner ink with a dropper that I've put in there I've got the little Tim Holtz Ranger brayer he likes this one because it has the little feet to hold it up um, and then we're going to use the actual glass mat here I'm using the Hamilco um, paper that I recommend for laser printing because it is coated and I do have some disinfectant wipes available. They're the dollar store brand. And uh, wish me luck, you guys, because if you've been watching my channel a while, you know I am not a fan of this toner ink. I don't think that it works the way that it was intended to work, but let's give it a go, Tim Holtz style. So Tim Holtz style is you don't use the mat, um, the stamping pad. Oh, I can't even get this off of here. There we go. You use the ink directly on your glass mat. You smear some of that out and then you go in with the brayer and try to get it on the brayer. My brayer is not moving clearly. You can see that. Okay. And then brayer it on the stamp. It's like old school press method, right? And you do have to work kind of quickly because the ink does get very sticky and dry and it's very hard to work with then. So you want to do it in small puddles. You're going to use it. And then I'm just going to kind of make a stamped impression here. Ugh, not exactly the best impression I'm looking for, but again, I'm trying to be open-minded here. <laughs> Yeah, and so I mean, I mean, one of the questions I get often on my channel is, is there a way to stamp and foil? And there is no quick and easy answer. Okay, let's try some more of that. This brayer doesn't want to. Too much coverage this time around. You don't want to use regular paper because, again, because this ink is super sticky. It wants to pull the paper. It almost rips the paper. There's too much on that one. So that's why I recommend some kind of a coated paper. Previously, I was recommending Marco's matte coated paper, but we found the Hamilco paper on Amazon for a little bit cheaper. I'll link that for you guys. And again, as long as you don't expect perfect results, you'll be fine. You cannot go into this thinking, oh, I'm going to get really clear, crisp images because it's not like stamping with an ink pad. This is a super sticky um, ink and the reason it is is so that when it goes through your mink or laminator the foil will stick to it. You want to be quick with stamping. You do not want to let that sit on your paper too long. Okay. 
and it's like stamping with syrup. I mean, it really does get kind of thick and icky. But as long as you don't have expectations of anything, leave all your expectations behind. Ooh, that's not a good one. You can tell when the ink is no longer usable, when it gets like this, you can see it's just super sticky. Think of it as like when glue is drying up and it just gets to the point where it doesn't want to move anymore, then you're going to need to add a little bit more to your glass mat. This is also very difficult to clean up because it is so sticky. So working on a glass mat or a non-stick mat makes it a little easier for cleanup, but you do not want to leave this drying on your stamps or your desk. Um, whatever it comes in contact with, you really want to get up um, and get it cleaned with warm water as quickly as possible. You can hear how that paper just wants to stick to it. Oh, so that one is probably one of the best ones and it's one of the last ones. Interesting. Let's see if I can get one more out of here. I don't know if I will. I think this is a little too dried out. And again, you want to work in small batches here because, again, it dries so quickly. Putting too much down isn't going to get you very far. Okay, wow, those last couple came out the best after the ink had dried a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to set this one aside. And it dries pretty quickly. And what I'll do is I'll show you guys tonight how we're going to use them. Clean up my mat there. Try to scrub my stamp a little bit. And again, I'm just going to use this as some backgrounds. Um, the Hamilco paper takes foiling very nicely. You can also do ink blending on it. And um, it says semi-gloss or gloss. It's the same on my Amazon page. Um, and I believe there's 80 and 100 pound. I like the 80 pound for card um, panels. You can go 100 pound if you want it thicker. Some of the printers don't take it that thick, so I think the 80 pound is the safest way to go. All right, I'm gonna leave this mess for a second. I'm gonna bring in another piece of paper and we're going to use the smaller stamp, this one, and see if we can also get some cool results with that one. Very, very important to clean up when using this stuff. It's like tar. All right, so another piece of the Hamilco. And you can see that it has a little bit of a sheen to it. Can you guys see that? Hopefully it'll pick it up. So it's got like a semi-gloss, glossy, not as glossy as photo paper. Um, photo paper is too glossy and too reflective that oftentimes foil sticks to the actual glossiness of it. So I don't recommend photo paper. Oh boy, this is sticky like molasses. I might have to go clean my brayer. This may not work. Yeah. Oops, too much ink on this one. This one's going to be blobby. Well, that's going to be blobby. We'll put that one in the middle. That one came out good. Just try 
trying to work a little quicker this time around. This is a little bit smaller stamp, so. Where these lighter areas, I don't know how well the foil is going to stick to that. Now, there's some intricate designs in here. So some spots the foil will stick really well where it's really thick and nice coverage. And some of the smaller areas where it's real wispy, um, the foil may not stick as well to those areas. So we'll find out as we're doing this tonight. here. came out nice. You know, it's like when I was using the ink pad. The stickier it got, the more it was, it's got this in-between perfect where it's not too wet, but it's not dry yet. It's kind of like when we add foil to alcohol inks. It's got to be this in-between sweet spot. That's where it seems to be stamping out the best. Wow, it's always the last couple that look good. Let me try to fill in here. Just kind of using what's left on the desk as a stamp pad. Just trying to lift that up. Some of this may foil and some of it may not, but that looks pretty good for a background sheet. There are some really crisp ones that I think are going to come out great. Um, you know, there's a couple blobby ones where it's just too thick, but I mean, look at this one. This one, those came out great. So I'm going to set these aside to dry and then you guys will watch the live with Tracy tonight. And then when you guys ask me how I did it, I'll be able to post this video for you. All right. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. So I realized that I didn't show you the reveal. And um, I've now done the live with Tracy. And I want to show you guys some of the foiling panels that I did reveal. They came out pretty good. This one, I used the tie-dye green, blue, and gold from H&H &H Foil 
on that and that came out pretty good so these are some of the other panels using the same foil you can see here we lost some of that detail and what you can do when some of that detail gets lost is to use a stiffer stencil brush and you can kind of go in there and you can see that all of that excess foil is flaking off so anywhere that it's in some of those finer areas where we don't really want all of that foil to be you can use a stiff brush and just kind of get some of that off of there a little bit of it anyway but you can see how fun that is and then on this one I did ink blending and that looks really cool so you have the foiling and then the ink blending on top of it so that's that one and then the second set of feathers here are those results these I use the um tie-dye bronze foil which has a little bit of bronze gold and silver in it and again because these are so organic is it perfect no it's not perfect but that's what this ink is really good for I would not use it on symmetrical or solid or sentiment stamps because it's going to skip and miss out on some of those areas so over here you can see there's a lot of foiling missing but you can still see how nice it looks um this one actually came out pretty good again so all of these finer areas where it stamped the toner ink but it didn't foil them but you can still see them because the toner ink does leave you know a color behind it's not clear um and if you're going to use these for background panels most people are not going to really notice so uh there we go i wanted to show those to you here's another one with the other peacock feathers so here you can see too much ink we lost a lot of the detail there it's where the ink kind of blobbed out and then we go in with that stiffed brush and just kind of take some of that foil away so we can get some of that detail to come back out and there you can see a little better all right Okay, so I wanted to show those to you guys, the cards that we came up with, and I'll link Tracy's channel with the video if you missed it and you want to check it out. It was quite a long live. It was two hours of us chatting and having fun and making all of these cards. On this one, I used the same stamp set. It's called Feather Pleasure. It's from Local King Rubber Stamps, and I used Perfect Pearls on black cardstock with this one and this one. And this one, I used the Local King Rubber Stamps markers and stamped them out in some very neutral colors there. Here you can see one of those foiled backgrounds back here. I used that to matte. I wish I had cut this panel smaller so you could see more of that beautiful foiling, but I think that came out really nice. And then here's another one where I used, there's a trio of these smaller feathers, a really fluffy kind of feathers, and I used the Local King Rubber Stamps markers on those as well. Stamp those out. The peacock feather is heat embossed with some teal tinsel from Ranger. Um, so yeah, check out Local King Rubber Stamps. The stamp and die set is called Feather Pleasure. They are based out of Canada. And if you have any questions about anything, post them down below. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.